Hi everyone, welcome back to The Colour Cave. It's Gem here and I'd like to welcome you to another Upcrate unboxing. We are going to just have a look at the supplies today. I am too tight for time to film the challenge, but if it's something that you'd like to see, drop me a comment below and if there's enough interest, I will do the Upcrate battle in an upcoming video. So let's just get stuck into this. I am really curious to see what is in this box as this is only my second one. If you'd like to watch the original one, I'll link it at the end card and you can go and watch that after. It seems to be that the supplies were mostly Graph Master last time and apparently the first box had the same sort of products in. So let's have a little look and see. So we've got our, our bump which will pop to the side just now. Okay. I just love this in the bottom of the box, it's super cute. Okay, so this is the art subscription box that comes from Germany, which is a great option for everyone in the UK and Europe. This is our featured artist, and this looks suspiciously like coloured pencil. And the artist is Jocelyx, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And this time it's just a description of this person that says something about me. It's not been done in an interview style. I love their take on the little Upcrate logo, that's super cute. It's kind of giving me Crash Bandicoot vibes. <laughs> so we've got our little envelope here and uh, we've got the list of supplies which I'm not going to look at just yet. Okay, so here's our little our little Crash Bandicoot style upcrate dude. And we've got our little sticker. So this is kind of following the same format as the last box and the postcard as well. More stickers. More stickers, more stickers, more stickers. I create my own reality. Ah, that's pretty clever. Okay, so lots of stickers. They're quite nice. And for some odd reason in this envelope as well are paper clips, which is kind of a weird choice, but one is in fact shaped like a cactus. So, you know, everybody needs a cactus paper clip in their life. Again, buckets of paper. Like, that, that was one thing I have to say that I was really impressed with in the last one was that we were given quite a large supply of paper. Now, we do have some black paper and it seems to be the same texture on both sides so we're not going to have the problem that we had last month. And it's got a little bit of tooth on it so that would kind of fit in with the whole pencil drawing from the featured artist. And we also have some toned paper as well. I've got eight sheets of the toned paper and I've got four sheets of the black so we're still getting 12 sheets of paper which is what we got last time. Now let's get stuck into this. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. The first thing that I can see is uh, these Statler super soft coloured pencils. These have come in a scroller box and I think it was maybe about six months ago. If you want to watch me review these pencils in full, again I shall link the original scroller box unboxing at the end card. It's going to be a busy end card and you can see them in a little bit more depth because I'm not going to take a huge amount of time over these. The one thing I will say though is I chose to use these in my ELO sketchbook last time and the paper in the ELO is quite smooth so it might be quite interesting to test them out on a, a paper designed more for coloured pencils and uh, I'll do a little demonstration for you just now though but I'm just not going to go into it in any depth. Generally as a rule and I don't know whether it's a popular sort of opinion or not but I generally don't rate Statler for their coloured pencils. I love all their other art supplies but I've tried various types and incarnations of their pencils and I've been pretty underwhelmed most times. I love for German eraser. Look at the colour of that. That is awesome. That's pretty nice. I like that. Okay, that's that's a good eraser just because of the colour, but I don't care if it works or not. <laughs> a, a pilot. Now this looks like a mechanical pencil, but it looks as if it's green, which is pretty cool. Creta colour sharpener. And this looks like a pastel pencil sharpener. We've got some washi tape. I have lots of this as well. It's got kind of like a, a geometric pattern on it. That's quite exciting. I don't, you can never have too much washi tape, that's for sure. We've got some extra lead, and this is Pilot Colour Eno, and this is blue lead. This looks like a Kohenur Progresso woodless white pencil. There's no stamp on it, but this is strangely similar. Here, Here's the Kohenur one. It just so happens I've got it beside me. These look practically identical, and you can see that my other one's got the stamp on it, so... Uh, that will be interesting to find out when we read all the, the bits and bobs. Creta colour white chalk, okay, white chalk oil. 
so that's what the sharpener's for so that's good as well wow loads of pencils this time a mars lumograph 2h pencil Mars Lumograph pencils are quite good. I quite like them. A 2H isn't a, a grade that I would use very often, to be fair, but they're good quality pencils. And what is this last one? Uh, a Kohenur Hardmouth Polycolor pencil, also in white by the looks of things. I'm assuming it is. The, the core looks white, even though it's gold on the end, so we'll just have to test these out. Okay, our super soft coloured pencils. Uh, they are made from sustainable sources, which is great. And the Mars Lumograph 2H, there's not much to be said about that. Okay, the Kohenur, it's a blender pencil. This one is a blender pencil. Soft, colourless pencil that allows you to blend two or more colours together. It mixes and smooths, it mixes and smooths colours, which softens individual strokes and hard, hard edges. If you're skilled with coloured pencil, you don't actually need one of these. I found it really hard to get any sort of lay down out of these, and I don't know if one of these is actually going to help the cause. But again, we can test these out on the paper that's been provided for us. The the Progresso woodless pencil, so I was right this this one is a Kohenur it's the same as the one I've got um it's there's no wood in it that's just like solid core basically and it works quite well on black paper but again I shall demonstrate that for you we've got some washi tape okay washi tape's great for those of you that aren't familiar with washi tape and I'm sure most of you will be it's supposed to be a low tack tape that can be has a variety of uses I personally use it to make my envelopes that I send out pretty and I also use it to pin down my watercolour paper because usually you can pull it back off without it tearing up the edges of the paper I'm interested in the white chalk oil pencil almost white as snow this light lightning pencil is indispensable for brightening areas and adding light spots it is ideal for obtaining photorealistic effects, offering limitless possibilities for working in layers and for smudging work, including the use of oil-based media. Well, that's interesting. The, the Pilot Colour, you know this is the, the mechanical pencil. It's available in eight bright colours, each with matching coloured lead. So this has got green lead in it. So you can buy the refills in all the colours, so you could just keep one pencil and you could switch between them. That's pretty cool. I quite like that. That's, that's quite a novel idea. The, the Multipurpose Eraser. It is just an eraser. It comes in two colours. I kind of like the blue one as well. I'm easily pleased. What can I say, guys? <laughs> it doesn't actually say anything about the sharpener. Yep, the, sh the sharpener isn't actually listed, so... But uh, the very fact that it's the same brand as the pencil, then I would be thinking that you would be wanting to use that with that. That makes sense. Let's talk about the paper. So the brown sketch paper, so the toned paper, is 135 GSM and suited for all kinds of sketches but best for pencils, pens, chalks, charcoals, crayons and pastels. Okay, and it is, see there is a bit of tooth on it so that's going to be quite handy for what we need. And the black paper is from the same company, SMLT Art. 120 GSM uh, jet black paper. Okay, that's about all the information that we've got. And finally, before we start testing out the supplies, on the back of our little upgrade battle card, it tells us the prompt, which is never stop dreaming. So the idea behind this, they've taken a bit of a twist on the art prompt and what they want you to do is they want you to create an artwork and post it on Instagram using the upcrate battle hashtag and they actually have like a little competition every month, which is really cool. So you've got till the 10th of the following month to upload your artwork. So yeah, if you want to see me do that, I can film it, that's not a problem. Just give me a shout and let me know. Lurk about in the comment section. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to swatch everything out, but I'm going to do it once on black and once on the toned paper, just because once again we have this beautiful multitude of paper. Oh, this is exciting. I quite like mechanical pencils. I'm kind of into them. So this is supposed to have green lead. Oh, it does. It's kind of like a minty green. Let's see if it works on it. Oh yeah. Oh, look at it on the black paper. Oh wow, that's nice. I'm impressed. I like that. I like this a lot. I I've got a bit of a fixation with drawing things on black paper. I'm just going to try and change this lead. Let's see if I can do this without breaking it. Oh, so I have to pull this out just the way you would with any other mechanical pencil. When you see the, the lead side by side like this, it is easy to tell the, the colour difference, even if you've only got one lead at a time. You know, there is quite a stark difference, so it's not like you'd be struggling to tell the difference. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, so let's have a go with the blue. Yeah, again, it doesn't show up a huge amount on the, the 
the toned paper but that's actually quite good because you could use that for a rough sketch layer and it's not going to intrude on whatever it is you're actually drawing you know when you start to do your line work or whatever oh yeah i love the i am so going to use this on black paper this is awesome right next we have the Konur progresso i'm not going to use this one because i've already got one i might as well use the one i'm already using and i know for a fact that this shows up reasonably well in black paper because i've been through this before it seems to layer a little bit as well so you you do have the option of building up those tones so if you were going to do like a silhouette picture then you've got that option i don't know how well this is going to show up on here but we've got the 2h pencil which is a 2h pencil it's quite a hard pencil so again probably best used for sketching and not much else they will show up on black paper a little bit now i'm quite curious with this this is the the chalk oil it feels nice going down i have to say it's it's very smooth That'll be the oily part, I would imagine, not the chalky part. <laughs> Let's test it out over here. Let's just do a, a quick side by side. Reasonable. I would say that that almost looks like the same pencil. They're almost identical. So again, I don't, I'm not really sure what the idea behind this is because it seems that they've given us, although they've got a very different makeup, they seem to be doing more or less the same job. So I'm quite interested to know why they decided to give us two, two white pencils in the same box but there you go maybe it's just a chance to test things out i actually don't have the last set but you do get 12 colors given especially that the black paper is a little bit more textured i uh, i'm just curious as to whether we're going to get any better results now that seems to be going down really well there and that was not the experience i had with my sketchbook for sure so most of the colours, apart from brown and black, which obviously you're not going to see a lot of on the black paper. Again, I would use maybe the brown or black uh, for sketching if I was feeling that way inclined. It's not a bad idea. I like this colour. It's a good colour. But you can see they show up really well on the black paper. Right, let's try them out on the tan paper. Now they call these super soft pencils. They're not super soft. Super soft by anyone's standards are Prismacolor pencils. They are the softest core pencil available on the market. I'm going to switch to my preferred colouring paper and I'm going to just do a quick layer test and a quick blending test. I don't see... We could do it on this paper, I suppose, but I would like to, to see it on traditional paper. Okay, so when we're talking about layering and blending, first of all, just testing out layers here. So just keeping a light hand... I'm just going to keep going over this and over this. That's me on layer three and the paper just does not want to take this. That's me scrubbing really, really hard and all I'm doing there is flattening the tooth of the paper. Now, while that looks quite vibrant on the camera, when it comes to actually blending colours together or layering them on top of each other, then you're very limited as to what you can do. So I'm just going to try and bring this in here. Oh, that's horrible. That's horrible. This is why they've given you a blending pencil because these, these pencils do not want to blend together. Let me try again. Strangely, I'm not getting the same feeling of having to like squeeze the, the lay down out of them that I got last time. But you can see there, like if you had a soft pencil, you should be able to start to blend these together. And you can see that that's just not really happening. And that was me using a really, really light stroke. Let's try the blending pencil. Now, when you're using these blending pencils, you're supposed to, to press quite hard. And you can see it's starting to smoosh the colour out there already. And it's actually like brightening it up, which is really good. Last time we were given a Derwent blender and burnisher and it did next to nothing. But this is actually pushing in so you can see i'm pushing the red up into the yellow and it's starting to give me orange and it's also starting to smooth out some of my pencil strokes as well it's not doing an immense job but it's definitely an improvement on what i had before because you can see we've got that nice band of orange in the middle now that just wasn't there before again there's only so much blending you can do because when you're doing this you are damaging the tooth of the paper and eventually it'll go shiny and that's when you've burnished it and i don't know if you can see that there but it's starting to go shiny so this is only going to help you to a certain degree but certainly for these pencils i think a blender is is a viable option so if we're talking about layering colors as well put some orange down put some blue down it just feels so scratchy that's that's at the limit that's me at the limit so that was six layers it was three layers of each color 
However, when we blend out now, it is giving us a much more even coverage and distribution of what's going on. I just want to switch over to some white paper. And this is purely like to satisfy my own curiosity. Okay, so here's some of the paper that I would normally use. Now see, this paper does have more tooth. So it is gonna catch more of the pencil. And now I'm like, I'm struggling to get anything out of that. Three, four, it's almost like the distribution of the colour is uneven within the core of the pencil. Because even when I'm doing this, my my strokes, some of them are, are very visible and some of them aren't. And like there just seems to be no even colour distribution. I also find it interesting that in both subscription boxes, we have been given a blender pencil with these coloured pencils. Okay, so I've got a bit of a blend there, but it's just not. And I'm running into the same thing. Now that, that middle section will not take any more pencil unless I press down and burnish the, the pencil into the paper. And that's really, it's only now I'm starting to get some vibrant colour. So you're really having to like mash into the paper to do anything, which kind of defeats the purpose of coloured pencils. Yeah, see I can't put anything over the top of that orange now. It's just not letting me do it. There's, no, there's nothing laying down. This should... Now it's actually not pushing the colour into the orange because as I say I've already destroyed the, tooth, the tooth of the paper. Now I just want to give you a comparison if you're not a coloured pencil person and you're sitting here going what is she ranting and raving about? Okay what I've got here are two Arteza pencils. Arteza are like a mid-range coloured pencil that are quite reasonably priced but I just wanted to show you what I'm talking about. So I've got a really light layer and I'll do the same with the other one. Now we can start to blend these together and I'm still going with these layers and it's because the lay down is much more generous within the pencil. I am not having to press hard to do this and the paper will continue to take layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of this because the actual quality and lay down of the pigment in the pencil is much more generous than the Statler ones. Okay, so now I'm going to start to... I, don't, I actually haven't counted how many layers that was, but that paper is still taking pencil. You get my point. So we're still going, but look at the difference in the vibrancy between these colours and these colours. This just looks like a kind of washed out version of that, and I'm not finished. I can still keep going with pencil like this. Okay, so just again, out of curiosity, I'm taking this blending pencil, and I'm deliberately starting in the darker area so that you can see me pushing it up through. And you can see there that it is taking away some of my pencil lines that I had in the middle. You can see where the, the blender pencils kind of like smooshed all this out and lightened the colour. And we've got this slight blend into here compared to this one that looks really rich. There's a lot of depth to it. You can work with it. So that's the difference in the quality sense. To say that these are super soft, I, I don't agree with that at all. I absolutely do not agree with it. Okay, we've got our rather swanky eraser and I just want to see, number one, is it going to take off any coloured pencil? And the answer is yes. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's try on a darker colour. Ooh, this is good. Normally we struggle to take off coloured pencil. Even on the heaviest part there, it's still done a pretty good job. I'm just going to like wade my way through it because there's the graphite, there's the white pencil and there's the coloured mechanical pencil. It's, it's even lifting the chalk oil as well, which is quite interesting. This is an excellent eraser. I'm in love. There is a little bit of uh, the, the shavings that come off, but they are, they are minimal. And it did say that the, the shavings or the, the rubbings, they stick to the eraser, not the paper. And you can see there that that's exactly what it's done. I might have to go and try and source one of these and get the blue one as well, just because I like things that are pretty colours. Okay, the last thing I've got here is the, the washi tape. So I'm just going to pop this open and take a little look. It's a very delicate shade of pink. And as expected, it is quite low tack. It tears easily. It sticks pretty well. Now let's see what it's like to peel back up. And that peels off pretty well as well. The good thing about washi tape is that you can, because it's got such a low tack adhesive on it, you can restick it as well. So if you need to reposition it slightly, you know, if you're going to use it in an artwork, you can do that and you can smooth it out so you're not going to get any sort of lumpy, bumpy creases there. And that's one thing it's really good for. I think it's going to show up beautifully on this black paper as well. Now let's see if I can pull it off a second time. No problem. 
starting to curl up a little bit though, but it's easy enough to unfurl, unlike normal sellotape. And we can stick that down there. And I thought the pattern might show up a bit more on the black paper, but it really doesn't. But there you go, stuck down as if it's the first time it's been stuck down, no problem at all. So let's see what happens when we pull this off. Now I was expecting it to leave a slight mark and you can see that it has, but it is so, so light. So even if you wanted to mask off an area of negative space, you know, and do a, a negative space type of drawing, you could use it for that and the marks aren't going to be that noticeable on this paper. So that is quite high quality washi tape, I quite like it. Okay, okay. so that is our Upcrate box for November. I'm actually quite curious and I think I'm going to do the Upcrate battle and I'm going to do it on this black paper because last time, although I've used these pencils before and I've used them for an art challenge, I never used them on black paper. So if you fancy watching me go through that, please let me know in the comments and I'll happily film it so you guys can see too. In terms of value for money... There's a lot of stuff in this box and that's one of the things that I really liked about the last box as well. There, there seemed to be a volume of items and it gave you that sense of getting your money's worth. In terms of this box, I'm a bit disappointed just because the Progresso pencil and the coloured pencils I've had before. Do I think we've got our money's worth out of this box? For me personally, it's got to be a no. I've paid £19 to have this box come to me from Germany and these pencils are worth about £5 if you were to buy them retail in the UK. I wouldn't pay £5 for these pencils. That's just a personal opinion. As for the other items in the box, I'm not sure whether the, the remaining contents are worthy of £14 worth of stuff. Again, my answer to that is probably no. However, there are a few little finds in here that I have not used before, like the coloured mechanical pencil and this eraser, which I'm quite excited about. And also this, uh, this white chalk oil pencil. I do do a fair amount of work on black paper, so this is something that I will use. And as I go along, I'm looking forward to exploring the, the differences in it, especially if I can use it with other oil-based mediums. Ah, I thought this was a sticker, but if I turn it over, this tells you about the sharpener, so they obviously forgot to include it in the original list. This artist sharpener makes working with artists and pastel pencils an absolute pleasure. Use this sharpener for your Creticolor white chalk oil pencil to receive a flat cone sharpened pencil point. I don't know, I, I, I'm kind of on the fence about this box, I think is what I'm trying to say. That was a really long-winded way to say it. That's my opinion. I would love to hear your opinion, so please feel free to tell me what you think of the box down in the comments section. And we shall see you on Sunday for another video back in the cave. Have a good day everyone and bye for now.